Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Anything Vlogs. My name is Indri Dika and it's a long time coming because I didn't get you July 6th when we were at the Indigo. Then you message me and you say, oh, where's our interview? And you got it here now and I do apologise. I was too busy getting everyone water back and forth, back and forth. But Such a good guy. Oh, thank you. See, and not many good guys left in the sport. But anyways, humble brag. Um, Melissa Zad, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, great. So Melissa, finally great to have you on. But talk about how long have you been doing interviews and, and commentary ringside? Um, so it's a bit of a weird journey, but essentially I came into boxing media around six years ago and I was working for um, a channel called Pep Talk UK, um, who was run by Shaz and Frankie, rest in peace Frankie, and um, I was working with them for a couple of years, building up my experience and getting comfortable speaking to boxers because it can be a bit intimidating actually. Um, and then from there I moved on and I worked for Into Boxing. Um, which was cool and I got to travel around a lot more and, do, and be a lot more active with it and at some point I branched out and started the MZ Boxing channel and um, it was around that time I decided actually I'd rather do presenting <laughs> so we're coming up to like two and a half three years now of presenting um, and yeah loving it and what was the if you recall it what was the first show you did Presenting, yeah, uh, it was Dean White's Black Box Global, mm. my first home, and uh, it was amazing because he kind of took that old school boxer. I don't know if you remember the boxer yeah, yeah. shows used to be like music events and boxing, and Dean kind of like recreated that and made it like topical and relevant and stuff. So it was really fun event to be a part of. And I've got to say thank you to Dean as well because that was my first show as well. Like Dean was the first show back in Tolworth last. I believe it was June 10th, if not July 10th. No, June 10th, because it was a Champions League final. It was the first Champions League final I missed out, but boxing's taken over. Um, although I love my football and West Ham on today. Gotta to get that in. <laughs> but yeah, no, talk about Dean White's show, because unless people haven't been to one, there's. And Alfie Clegg loves it. Alfie Clegg brings out all these kids. But it's like. It's kind of like a nightclub vibe, and I say it's like a mayor of a nightclub because it's sick. Because you don't just get your traditional boxing; you you get a hang about, you get go outside. It's it's just oh, lovely. Look, look, it's a whole event. Like at the end of the day, he's got the music, he's got the vibes, he's got the boxing, and then he's got food as well, which he's is got the drip as well. <laughs> he's got the drip, and but he's got food as well, which is like missing from a lot of these. Like you know, you don't get food at your. You pool. don't get food at your pool. You don't even get a cup of tea. So going back onto the boxing from Dean White's, where did that take you? Yeah, so I was working on the Black Box Global shows and I sort of built up my first batch of experience from there. And that was really cool because obviously, you know, when you first start something, you know, it takes you a while to find your feet. Um, and then at some point, I got a message from John from TM14 to ask me to host a press conference. And I was like, well, I've never done that. And he was like, oh, just come down. It'll be fun. You should do it. And I was like, okay. So I hosted a press conference. I'm no good at hosting pre press conferences, by the way. Like, you need bags of personality. And I was just being, like, really rigid. Um, and then, yeah, from there, I slowly started doing the ringside interviews for TM14, who have now, of course, collabed with uh, Nielsen Boxing. And, um, yeah, we've all just been growing together, basically. It's been lovely, beautiful. And you talk about this. They've been together for a few months now and then they went against each other at the indigo talk about that night oh it was such a fantastic night so it was 6th of july 02 indigo and they kind of went off of the saudi 5v5 style so they each had their own separate teams the nielsen team and the tm14 team and they had selected boxers face off against each other um and it was just like a cracking cracking night of boxing like honestly it was like fan friendly toe to toe the whole night was great i remember like all of us were up on the on the ring side yeah like it was a bit to, weird because yeah, it's it like was, a theater yeah it's a theater right so it's like the ring is elevated and then there's like back place and we were all stood there and um we were watching jordan reynolds v joel bartell joel bartell and that was like an like amazing yeah event. that was an amazing uh fight to to watch and witness and also england played that day and we beat switzerland sure so <laughs> sure. you're not a football fan are you i'm not a football fan no um if i had to support a team i would support aston villa but i don't really follow follow aston football villa beat Bayern the other day so i saw that and that was like a monumental thing wasn't it mm. yeah iconic not only for aston villa football clubs it was one nil when they won the champions league but also for <laughs> english football so let's talk about that before we round off Break down today's, because we did definitely digress. Um, break down today's card. What did you love the most? 
Um, okay, so my fight of the night was definitely Haji Muhis versus um, a man's name who I won't butcher by trying to pronounce. But Haji Muhis was just amazing. He was exactly the kind of boxing style and ability that I really appreciate. He was like back foot boxer, counter puncher, defensive, um, defensively minded. Yeah, you try and pronounce that name. Uh, Gratian back, or I don't know where I mean, it is. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna. Um, I don't know if it's it's like Eastern European or if it's Spanish. So it's one or the other. But yeah, that was definitely my fight of the night. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yeah, the last three fights. Yeah, Dan so that Francis. so that was the third to last. Then there was Dan Francis versus. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing fight. I used to train with Slav back in Islington, oh. so I was like deeply invested. Um, unfortunately, he didn't uh, pull it out of the bag. Dan did win the fight, deservedly so, but it was close, and I think the the scorecards were fairly um, re representative of that. And then the last fight was, of course, oh. Devon Miller versus Lewis Oakford, which was a cruiserweight, um, a cruiserweight, silver. yeah, vacant Commonwealth Silver type Championship fight. And um, you know, Devon came into the fight with more experience. He um, had the international experience. He's got the Knockouts. The knockout, seventy-five percent knockout ratio. He spars like the big names across Britain. Um, so he definitely came into the, the fight as the A side. Um, but unfortunately he just didn't do enough tonight. And Lewis kept it very simple, a uh, very simple game plan. He worked behind the jab and the jab takes you around the world. So And he was a comma fighter in the ring. Yeah, I feel like, you know, Devon's style is such that he does explode and he has these moments of like explosion i don't think it's comes from a place of not being calm mm. i just think that lewis had the better strategy coming into the fight and i don't think devon quite figured it out as the fight progressed and it's a hard trick now for lewis he's beat him in the amateurs and he's now beating him twice talking about the amateurs and this is not digressing you've had a fight break down your fight yes i've had one i'm i'm one one and <laughs> one, and, one and done and also one and oh. why not why, why um, don't you want to i don't know i just felt like it was something i really wanted to do at the time and then i tried to build some momentum off of it and it didn't quite materialize in the way that i wanted and you know i'm not a young um, buck anymore i'm not, I'm not a spring chicken so mm. i thought i wouldn't say a day over 18 <laughs> maybe 21. you're definitely a charmer Cheeky. um but yeah no it was an amazing experience i was working with one of the best uh, coaches out there, Nicholas Prempe, and um, yeah, it was wicked. I stopped during the second round um, and loved it. Had my little like moment with what like, year the was this? 2022. Why, why didn't you get back into it? I have now moved on to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh, yeah, because it's like super technical and super fun. Uh, would you ever go and miss it? No, hell no. I don't even like. Sorry, I shouldn't really say this. No. I don't like misfits as much as pro boxing. pro boxing. Before I let you go, not only women in boxing, and we see Sky Nicholson versus Raven Chapman being the first female world title abroad, not abroad, but in Saudi Arabia. But That's talk about exciting. Yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you, who do you Well, got? it's an interesting one because Sky is, you know, incredibly skilled. Mm -hmm. She's incredibly skilled. She fights so well on the back foot. She okay. has like such a defensive style. You know, as I've said, I love that kind of style. However, Raven mm. is such a pressure fighter and she can really bring it and she can really take it to the trenches. And I'm not sure if anyone that Sky has faced up until this point has been such a pressure fighter as mm. Raven. So if someone's going to get to Sky, I think someone like Raven Chapman could do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a cracking fight and like, you know, love love both of their boxing styles, so I'm really excited for it. And talking about women outside of the ring, you, Miss Ali Drew, just talk about Alex Scott in football, talk about the rise of women, because I know we by, bypass the point of calling it women's boxing or, or women in this sport, but you not only deserve your position, not only do you earn it, but it's, it's great to see for younger girls, like I said, I saw Alessia Russo do an interview last year or, or when they won the were Euros and she said she would have never imagined seeing a little boy with a girl on the back of uh, his, his shirt. So how does it feel to not only be a role model, but put yourself out there and inspire other girls? I'm on do you know what? I've never ever considered myself a, a role model as such, but I think that you've, you know, you've hit a really important um, point. Okay. Yeah. And I think that, you know, not every um, person who enjoys a sport is destined to be an athlete in that sport. 
um, and sometimes you can kind of take an alternative path. And I think it's amazing that there are so many women who are finding their space within different sports, right? And you know, you see them, you see them paving that path, and um, it's an honor to be a part of that that generation, that journey. I think that there's been many more talented women who have come before me, and they definitely paved that path for me. Um, so I'm, you know, indebted to them, and it's it's amazing. Um, penultimate question before I let you go. What's your one motivational message to the world for fans to block out the outside noise, block out the haters, block out the negativity, and for everyone to follow and pursue their dreams? Um, my one motivational message, just be authentically you. Just be authentically you. Let things flow. If it's not flowing, it's not flowing for a reason. And, you know, follow that good energy, I think, is my motivational message. I don't know how motivational it was, but that's my motivation no it's good and talk about that what's your message to your support is everyone that uh, sees you at shows greets you at shows and everyone that loves what you're doing and what you're doing for women in sport and sport in general and just what you do with the interviews because it's cool and I like it maybe one day I could be in your footsteps <laughs> uh, my message to them is just like you know, I love I love catching up with people at shows. I feel like boxing is like my second home. I feel like I'm part of a community, and it's amazing to be able to represent that community and uh, be here at shows and do what I do and do something that I'm so passionate about. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Melissa's up. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.